So there are sort of two sides to the story. There is the concern around surveillance and espionage issues related to Huawei, and then a greater concern about 5G in general, and the idea that if the world is more connected, is it also more vulnerable? Let's answer that question first. Would you agree? Does it open more doors to I, threats? I think what happens with 5G is people are moving to it because there is a need for speed, right? People want to get this next generation of applications out there faster, things like connected vehicles. And there's also the need for more throughput. So all of these applications that require video, um, this will speed it up. So I think there's a lot of advantages, and that's why we hear a lot of buzz and a lot of discussion around 5G. But you're absolutely right. There are a lot of risks that are going to come with it. When you connect more things up, it increases the attack surface. There's just more points for the attackers to get into the network. And does that mean a harder job for you to protect them because you're now fighting on many more fronts? Well, I think what's so hard is you already have human security teams that are having trouble keeping up today and you add 5G to it with all of these points of presence and it does amplify it. So we're able to use artificial intelligence to actually have all of these points in this new definition of a network kind of self-defend. And that's why artificial intelligence is really going to help customers get ahead of it. Now, does Huawei in particular concern you? Well, I think what we are seeing is that this is raising to the forefront the whole issue of people analyzing who is in their supply chain? Um, where is this technology coming from? So I think it really has changed the discussion. And unfortunately, I think it, it all seems to always focus around one particular vendor. But really, it's shining light on a much broader supply chain attack issue. When you say, unfortunately, does that mean you don't have specific concerns tied to Huawei and its own connections to the Chinese government? Let's I think say. they're one of many. Uh, and I, I think it really comes down to not only in telecommunication networks, but in everybody's supply chain. There's technology coming from all over the world. In fact, any given piece of technology might have you know, either dozens or even hundreds of different providers in, of component pieces. And you don't know where all those pieces are coming from. So I think it means we have to change the way we look at security, and we need visibility and real-time monitoring to see if all of a sudden something starts beaconing to some other part of the world we didn't expect it to. So is China of a particular concern more so than other countries? Or are you saying technology in general coming from anywhere in the world? Well, I think that the uh, attacks can come from anywhere. I think this bridges really to the broader topic of there are some kind of uh, impacts of nation states uh, and the styles of attacks rolling over into the organized cyber criminal ring. And so that kind of correlation and connection between nation state activity uh, and cyber criminals is coming to the forefront. So how can we use AI, can you use AI to detect cyber crime to protect in a more connected world? So I think the first part is using artificial intelligence to understand normal. So we actually um, embrace the principles of the human body's immune system. Our skin keeps us safe, but sometimes bacteria virus gets inside. But the most important part is the effect of AI fighting back. So this is gonna become a full-on war of algorithms against algorithms, and you're gonna have to need to have AI algorithms that can fight back in real time. So uh, Baltimore's government computer systems recently faced a ransomware attack. Are you seeing these attacks become more sophisticated? Or are you know, some of these folks using the same old tricks, essentially? You know, we're, we're talking about things like 5G and digital transformation and all this kind of new innovation. I think what Baltimore points out is you also have to get back to basics. Mm. You have to have good cyber hygiene. You have to keep your systems, you know, passion up to date. 